Okay, I'm gonna go over how to set up um, layer ling chain. Uh, sorry, layer chain. It was named after ling chain, but no one really understood the idea, so it's actually been renamed. And basically, we're gonna get to a point where we can just run these chats and on our documents, and I'll show you how easy it is to get set up. So to start with, we're gonna download herd and just download it and run it and it will just you know do its thing it has good docs but it's so easy it just gets you going on um, PHP it will start off with just this folder here for herd and that's where we're gonna put our code um, if you're not using the free version sorry if you're using the free version you won't get the built-in database and that's okay uh, we need Postgres anyways with uh, GIS extension or vector extension I mean and so I don't know if it does that but it's so easy to do without this so let's just look at that so first let me download DB engine and with DB engine um, again if you're not using the herd paid service which is well worth the money if you do develop a lot we do DB engine because we need to run Redis of course we can also run MySQL but we're not using that right now and then you download the Postgres app, which again is it's download, install, and go. The Postgres app I use because um, uh, it lets me install the vector driver. The DB Engine one doesn't. Uh, maybe they have updated that by now. But um, Table Plus is a great UI to do things. And what we're going to do, ignore this for a moment, is we're going to make, so once we get the database set up with um, with that Postgres um, app, we're going to make a database called LaraChain just to get us going. Once we make that, we're going to cl click the SQL and just run that, and it will just run and say, "Yeah, um, I've installed the driver. I already did that." So that's it. So now we have um, we have Herd running. We have DB Engine for our cache, which uh, sorry, not really cache. It's Redis so that we can do queuing, which you'll see in a moment why. Postgres for the vector database, table plus to just quickly make it. This is the big download. You download a llama and get that guy running. Now, once you download that, ah, oh, the Phi 3, I gotta try that. Once you download that, let me use my terminal here. You know, you're gonna have to do the um, pulling of the databases. And it could just take, you know, five minutes or so because they are pretty big. And um, what we're gonna do is. Um, uh, pull those down. I've already done it, but we're gonna pull down some. Okay, so the I wanted to change my keys so they're bad, they're fake ones that are they're good ones, but I'm gonna just delete them after the video. But basically, I downloaded the Llama model and the MX Bay uh, in bit large. These are pretty much default in the code now, so I don't even think I need those anymore. In Reverb is just how we're gonna do some WebSocket stuff. So. Um, let's take a step back though. So now I've downloaded all that uh, herd in the database and I've gone to the GitHub repo to, um, sorry, I swear I had this one open, uh, to grab it, get the HTTPS one, it'll be easier, and then get clone it. Now, like we saw a moment ago, herd puts stuff in here, okay? And so you're gonna get clone that into there. And yours will be this new name. Mine is still the old name. Now I'm going to go back to the folder I'm in for this demo. And actually, let me just stay here for a moment because I'll do the install right here. Then you would do, like it says in the docs, composer install. And uh, let's see here. Composer install, or oh, either order. And we'll do uh, npm install. Now I don't think it says to do this, but let me fix the notes. M, we're going to copy that .env example over to .env. But I showed you that good one I have already, so I'm going to go snag that. And I'm going to, um, well, it doesn't matter because we're not going to use that install. And then I'm going to go back to the docs. And what do we do next? Right, so now we want to um, migrate our database. Now we made the database already in Table Plus because it doesn't make it automatically for Postgres, so we'll do it for MySQL. And 
And so that's why that migration just worked. And we made the user for the local site is, um, where is that guy? Right here. Okay. So now uh, we are pretty much set. So test and I got one thing I did not go over in that video, so I'm adding it now, is to make sure you're running these services before you can visit the site. It's these three. Because they're long running services, I just start three split um, terminals in my editor. And then I just run them. Run that one in one, run that one in another, run that one. So this gives us the UI, uh, this gives us the queue, and this gives us the web sockets, which just kind of let the uh, front end update. Got this saved in my password manager. Uh, let's see here. Let's go log into our site. All right, so here we are. Now the queue is going to be interesting to learn about. Uh, I'm going to close this one. And a lot of stuff will happen here. This is where the multitasking or multiprocessing happens. And so we're just going to upload some example content. I'll show you. Um, and the description does matter, but I'm not going to worry right now. We'll start with a llama because the file is so small. This won't take too long. And we're going to upload some sample file um, that's in the uh, layer chain test folder, example documents. And I'm just going to grab a small one just so we can keep moving. And we could do a P, a PowerPoint one as well. Um, the um, the PowerPoints are supported right now in the PDFs. The other ones are just a day, uh, actually not a day, they'll be done next week. It's just uh, just moving some stuff around. Um, but in the meantime, we can do, I think this guy is pretty small. Yeah, it's very small. Just so we don't have to wait too long. So what's going on, it basically goes and runs batches and those batches will break up the files, chunk the data, summarize the data. So for example, if we look here, at this collection, collection number one, and we go into the database. Here's our collection. And it gives it a, um, uh, let's see, it get, okay, then let's go to the document. So collection ID one, let's go look. We have a PDF that's pending, um, sorry, complete, and it has a summary which it makes at the end. It, it does all the work and then it makes it with the LLM. From that, it chunked up the documents. Let me make this a one. And you know, here we go. It says, you know, um, complete summaries. The summary comes, uh, the LLM makes the summary, but it has all this data from the document and the embeddings. Um, so that's about it. And then it goes through and tags it. Now the tagging um, isn't, isn't, it's a zero shot tagging. So it's gonna be better once we add some more helpers or agents. And it just finds some tags and applies them. Uh, and then the PowerPoint guy should be done by now. If not, we can look at the log, not the log, sorry, the queue. Uh, and we can say, okay, what's up with that batch? Summarize and tagging, PowerPoint pending. So it, it took that, it found 43 chunks, um, not pages, but just chunks of data or objects. And now it's going through, and again, because it's Olama, and all this is good. It's Olama's great. It's just it's one thread right now, so we don't overwhelm it. So I put it into its own queue, and I really just say you can only run one thing at a time. So that will be done shortly. But let's go chat with it. Um, oh, it did finish. So there you go. Um, there's some dummy data, and this is the global one. And then uh, there's the tags. Now let's go chat with that. And then we're going to use, so we're using Olama. Olama doesn't have um, tools or functions, so we can always press this if we want to do a completion. I'll explain that in a moment. Let's, let's get something in here. Oops. Well, this is doing it, I'll explain it. So basically, um, the systems with tools and functions in OpenAI and Claude, it's smart enough to say, hey, is this a search? Is this a summary? What does the user want? But OpenAI, uh, sorry, Olama doesn't have that, so by default it's going to do it. And then um, if we wanted to just com do a completion, so say I want to throw this back at it and ask it to do something, um, then we would just throw it in there and ask it to complete it. Just basically take it and take our prompt and just do that one thing. 
Uh, so it did find some things. I don't know why we had that error message. I'll look after. But if we go to edit and we now said, you know what, let's use Olama. Let's use um, OpenAI for this one. And we don't have to re-index. Um, the indexing was already done. Um, but now we can just ask the same question of um, OpenAI. And again, it's it's a little bit better than Olama, not because of the models. And almost not at all. But it's just we're doing a little bit more advanced function stuff. And until Olama has that, we have a little bit of a head start on that with Claude and uh, OpenAI. But that's, you know, coming soon. Olama's just crushing uh, on the speeds. And if we go back to the document and we do edit and we say, you know what, let's see what Claude has to say. Again, why do we come back here? No good reason. I just got to fix the UI. We ask the same question. And notice the option to, to um, do the uh, completion is gone just because it knows. In that one, um, Claude failed. So it doesn't, it, <laughs> um, it's, I get that silly, um, test document in there so it might have gotten in the way um, so let's see let's see if we can ask a different question typically Claude actually does a nicer looking delivery there we go so you know um, it's still not multi-shot so again we're just dealing with like hey why did I return that? Why did the agent not say, is this good? No, this is not good, and try again. But those are happening. They're, they're being built. Uh, you know, it's not much work. It's just we gotta start. I got to start doing it. But, yeah, that's it. That looks at how easy it was to get set up and start throwing documents at it uh, and just how it works so you can kind of understand what's going on behind the hood. Um, like here's a, you know, and tagging is going to get better here. It kind of prefixed it with something I don't want. So, uh, you know, we just got to. You make it better that in the zero shot or the multi shot would just look for that and remove it. Uh, little details like that. All right, that's it.